What is going on here with Nate Way? This is Cross Beats Production, and thank you once again for tuning in. So first off, I just want to say thank you to you guys for um, watching this channel as per usual. Thank you for all the likes, the subscribes, and everything you do for this channel because it really does help this channel grow, and it really does encourage me to help you guys out further and do more of these videos. So um, without further ado, let's get into this video and talk about how to get a bad sounding snare that you um, received on a mix and how to make it sound a little bit better. Or if it's extra harsh and you don't like the harshness of the snare, um, how to work around that as well. Um, so this is more or less the harshness of the snare issue that I'm facing right now. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can work around this. So obviously, if you're working in Studio One, um, things are a little bit easier in respect of replacing snares with other snares. It's quite easy to do that. So first off, I'll just show you that function so you understand how that works. Um, the reason why I want to replace or fix this snare is because if you look closely at this snare, um, I'll just zoom in here. You can see the transient right here. Actually, I'll just zoom in a bit more. The transient is quite sharp and it's quite cut off. So there's not a whole lot going on after that. The The tail of the actual the snare just kind of winds off really quickly. Um, and it doesn't have um, much of a, a decay, I should say, on the snare. So when you hear it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's got a really harsh um, snap to it which does sound good, but it gets really frustrating to listen to it on the ear, and it doesn't sound good if you're listening to it continuously over and over again. So how do we fix that? So first off, like I said, there's two ways to do it. Um, you can get this entire track here, um, and you can get an audio thing here where you pretty much go into this, oh wait, this one here, sorry, um, and you can go into detection, and it can actually analyze the audio. So if I just hit analyze right now, um, it will analyze all of the transients on that particular track. So I'll zoom in here and uh, just show you. So each transient, it's just analyzed, it's picked up where the highest peaks of the transient are, and it's told me that. So one of two things you can do at this point, what you could do is go down to your bottom area, you could pull down a new, uh, sorry, a new audio track, go into your instruments and pick out whatever VST it is you want to use. Uh, for example, if you had like a, a contact or um, native instruments machine or whatever it is you can put that onto here uh, so i'll just do it just to show you what i'm talking about so you can see exactly how it works um, so we'll just wait for that to load okay so we've got native instruments i'm not going to put a drum on there because i don't need to do that i just want to show you how you, how it works so pretty much you just drag this down here by holding down your uh, alt key and then copy it into it and what it will do at that point i'll just zoom in on this and show you it allows the audio to convert to MIDI. Now this can be really handy if you want to get the exact sort of timing of that snare and work around that particular uh, you know, timing of the snare and then replace it with some other snare. So for example, if I was going to do that, then I could just get my contact and go back into there, drop whatever it is I want to put in there and work on that from that. That's one way of replacing a snare. So that's snare replacement. That's not exactly what I'm going to show you. So that's uh, the first option. So let's just get rid of that. I don't need that anymore. And um, that's to get a different sounding snare or a similar sounding snare that you like that works with the track. So say we don't want to do that. We don't have the option to do that. And we're not looking at um, replacing the snare. And that's not the idea. What then? Okay, let's listen to this particular snare and see what this drum kit sounds like with the snare on it as well. So I'll just play the drum kit. Let's go. Let's make that a little bit louder so you guys can hear it. Okay, so at the moment, it doesn't sound too bad. In my opinion, I think the snare probably needs work anyway because of the way it sounds. Let me just isolate it and show you what I'm talking about. So let's just go without the plugins that I've put on here and show you what it sounded like when I first got the snare. Okay, that was the snare. Um, when I first listened to it, I thought, okay, it kind of works with the track and it sounds okay, not too bad. Um, but I thought it needed to have some of the transient taken off of it. And I just, when I was listening to it, I thought of Chris Lord Algae and the way he works on his snares. 
Um, so there's kind of a trick that he he uses. It's not exactly what I'm using the plugin, but he uses this idea to to do it. So first off, what I did was I used the free plugin, which anybody if you got you guys can download this for free. Um, anybody can access this. It's Isotope Vinyl. Um, Isotope Vinyl is like a replication of a vinyl record. So you some of you guys may not know vinyl too well, but the older guys will, so you'll know exactly what vinyl sounds like. I'm sure everybody knows kind of what the idea of vinyl sounds like, at least anyway, um, but the younger kids may not. Anyway, so vinyl has a smoothing off of the high frequencies. It also has a smoothing off of low frequencies, and that's because of the way it has to fit on vinyl. So there's a whole story behind that. Don't want to get too much into that right now, but this plugin makes the frequencies sound smoother. So you can adjust the year. Uh, this has got different years from 1930 to all the way to 2000. And obviously the RPM of the speed of the vinyl as well. So all I did was basically drop the vinyl plug in onto this VS, uh, sorry, onto the instrument. So the snare and I allowed different frequencies. I just messed with this till I, it sounded good to my ear and it kind of sounded like it cut off some of the high frequencies. So let's have a listen to the snare without it and then with it. Awesome. So it sounds like a little bit rolled off uh, on the top end frequencies, just a little bit smoother. And you'll see here, this is kind of like the, the shaping that they're looking at with the EQ curves and stuff like that. Um, so that's that's a nice sounding uh, snare in that regard. Now, what can I do with the transients? Because you'll find that transients are the reason why sometimes snares sound too sharp or the transients are too sharp or they're not enough. It could be both of those, really. It could be anything. But um, the way you work around this is one, you can use EQ to obviously get rid of some of the frequencies. And then when you have a transient designer, which I have in this plugin, which uh, is Neutron, um, you can use that as well. So let's first um, see what the EQ does. We'll take off the transient designer and we'll just work around the EQ and I'll show you what I've done here. So I've used a dynamic EQ on some parts of the frequency where it peaks. So I'll just turn off that EQ. Actually, no, I'll just bypass it um, this way. And um, then we'll turn it on. So you can see there's a lot of peaking in this area here. So what I've done is I've taken out 5 dB of gain. Uh, I used kind of like a band shell filter to um, sort of flatten off the frequency and remove that part of the area where it was really, really loud. Um, and I've dipped out some here as well at the 1K range. Uh, it's about 1.1. 1. 1. 1. And just a slight amount there because I didn't want to get too much out of that area. And I've just left the rest of the filters alone. So these ones aren't active at all. It's just the... The ones that you can see there so those two so from there what do i do i went to the transient designer and um after listening to the snare a few times coming back to it listening actually in the mix um, another key is listening to the snare actually in the mix as well because when you're doing stuff outside isolated you can tell it sounds great but then when you put it in the mix it just falls apart so you want everything to be in context of what you're working on as well so Let's go with the transient designer and have a look and listen to what that sounds like as well. So let's go without and then we'll go with it. Okay, awesome. It sounds smoother. Um, it's a little bit more rolled off. Some of that transient that's really frustrating to listen to over and over again, 
Uh, some of that's been rolled off. So that's really good. Uh, that works well in the mix. Now, the next stage is you could, you could go into compression. Um, you, you could do compression before all this as well. Um, I just personally went for the transient designer because I knew that that's the sound that I was going for. Uh, but if you're going to go use compression, there's multiple different compressors you can even use. Actually, I'll just go to the standard compressor so that you guys can have a listen to that as well. Um, let's go, wow. Let's go into Studio One's compressor. Um, so what I would probably do in this situation is maybe just try the um, ratio at one to one at the start. Pull the threshold all the way down and then start listening to uh, the compressor as you pull up the ratio. So let's have a go at that. In a makeup game. Let's go in the context of the drum kit. Go back again. Alright, so uh, this is all done by ear, obviously with the compressor. Uh, you can set your uh, attack, attack and release settings to be according with this, the track as well. So, for example, if it's 87 BPM, you just go into a thing where you can... Actually, I'll just show you guys. I'm, I've shown you guys hundreds of times this before anyway. Um, so you just go into Nick Fever, uh, which is the site that I use. You don't have to use this site. Just type in Delay Calculator, Reverb Calculator. It'll find something on Google. Um, type in... Whoa, calm down, diddly. Type in, uh, when you get to that section, and you get past all the ads, uh, just type in 87, and that will give you the calculations for your release times on the compressor. So if you want to use a 132 or a 116 or a 1 8, there's your release times right there. So that's the easiest way to find the release times for your compressor to be in, in line with the actual BPM of the track. You don't necessarily have to set it up that way, it's just a way that you can do it um, to be more in rhythm with the notes and the, and the you know, obviously the rhythm of the track. So maybe go for a 1 8 if you wanted to try that. So that was about 300 and something, I'll just go and check. Yes, 344, so 344.8, we'll just do that. 344.8, and let's listen to what that sounds like. So let's go with an attack. I think it was at 10. Yeah, we'll try 20 milliseconds. Actually, we'll just try 10 to see how that sounds because that's kind of half of the fastest attack there. So let's go. Try right, 20. Awesome. Sounds like it's breathing. Sounds like it's moving with the track. It's kind of what I'm after, um, but this again, it's subjective to your mix. So let's have a listen in context of some instruments on this track as well. Okay, sounds pretty good. Um, this is kind of like the technique that I go for when I'm listening and working on a snare, especially if the snare isn't exactly how I want it to sound when I first get it. Like, sometimes you have a snare that just sounds fantastic. So, I mean, this is just a good technique that you can use and engage on your own mixes. If you don't have Neutron as well, just as a tip, um, there are plugins that you can use that are cheaper than Neutron. For example, let's just go back to this um, right here. So, Bittersweet is a transient designer, and you can use it. It doesn't work exactly like Neutron because it doesn't have multiple bands to work like that. 
Um, and again, you won't be able to use the similar functions that you know Neutron has, but you can use this as a free plugin. There's another VST. Um, I'm just trying to think of the name as well. I'm sure if I can find it, I'll include it in the, the description below. Uh, but there's another transient, there's numbers of transient designers out there, but there's a couple of free ones you can get. So let's just listen to this and see what it sounds like. Cool. So, I mean, put it on the sweet mode. You've got a transient designer right there. Bittersweet. Go download that. It's worth the uh, the free entry fee. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.